the next Tuesday, a pivotal moment in the presidential race. Right now, Trump has 458 delegates. Ted Cruz has 359. Marco Rubio, 151. John Kasich in last with 54. For the Democrats, Hillary Clinton has 1,221 delegates and Bernie Sanders has 571. Alana Rocha of the Texas Tribune is here. She's going to give us her take on why Florida is so important and Ohio as voters head to the polls soon on Tuesday. What's yeah. at stake here? A Another lot. Super Tuesday. Another uh, one. Um, yes, yeah, six uh, contests for the GOP. Uh, Democrats have five uh, that they'll be voting for. And uh, yeah, four of those six for the Republicans are winner take all, right. which we really haven't seen yet this primary season. So uh, a lot at stake. And uh, the fact that two of those four are uh, the home states for John Kasich being Ohio and Marco Rubio being Florida. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they're both gentlemen who you just showed on the delegate count are the, the, the low tier yeah. um, say they need to win their home states and that'll be the turning point in this election but the polls don't uh, seem to be in their favor. And how surprising is it uh, if Rubio cannot pull out a win in his home state how damaging might this be to his future? His future, uh, yeah, a absolutely. I mean, there's some question if he would get out before Tuesday simply because if he has political aspirations, say, to run for governor of Florida uh, or any other office, uh, statewide office in that state, um, you know, what it would mean. I'm a, a native Floridian uh, and talking to my parents yeah. and family, large Latin family down there. Um, you know, I haven't lived in Florida since Rubio has been in office, but it seems that they're, they're just kind of unimpressed with him. They, they seem to like Trump. Mm. Um, uh, talking to a lot of people, just uh, the fact that, you know, they think he'll be bold and uh, represent the country well. Bush was a popular governor in Florida. I'm wondering if Bush endorses Rubio for Tuesday, if that will kick it up a notch. Uh, I don't know if we're hearing that, mm. um, you know, and, and if he'll get back into the political fray. You know, he had a rough run and it was unprecedented. You know, everybody it's thought tough. he such, raised so much money, $100 million for his super PAC, and then ended up getting out. So, yeah. uh yeah, it'll it'll remain to be seen, but again, the polling, I don't know how much of a difference it would make if he does, uh, in fact, endorse him. Carly Fiorina made an endorsement yesterday. She's right. on Cruz's side. Is that going to help him with the establishment? The establishment, the women vote, mm -hmm. um, you know, again, uh, we'll see, but it's been an unprecedented election cycle to where, you know, the Trump factor is... Uh, Going strong. Very much so. Yeah. yeah. Let's talk about um, something else that I think people have a very strong opinion of here in uh, Texas. Lawmakers passed a bill in 2013 requiring a drug test for some um, unemployment applicants, but that, is that even happening? No, 2013, uh, it passed, signed into law by then Governor Rick Perry, and here we are in 2016, and basically the state was able to pass that law because Congress passed a law in 2012 allowing them to do that, but mm -hmm. because of that, uh, states like Kansas and Mississippi, I believe, are other ones that have passed laws, have to get guidance from the Department of Labor as to what occupations would be subject to such testing. I see. They still haven't gotten that information. Well, it's, it's been a while. Right. I mean, they have to publish a final rule, public comment. I mean, it's a whole long process. And my quotes for the story from yesterday bring almost eerily uh, the same as they did in 2013 from wow. the Department of Labor. It's coming. It's coming. Right. We will see. Right. Alana Rocha with the Texas Tribune. Thank you for that. Thank you.